Hey there, this is Lee Gerstmann and Charles Trainer on the show. How are you doing, Charles? <clears throat> Lee Gerstmann Show. Like that. Um, it's the Lee Gerstmann Show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. The show. Well, uh, I I can decide to change the name if I want. Well, there you go. I mean, he is the boss. He pays the bills here. The the and, boss. Uh, it's it's the boss show without the boss. Here's the yeah. new boss, same as the old boss. Hey, folks! If people notice a change in my voice, I've been pretty much partying like a motherfucker the last couple of weeks in Gerson. It's been a fantastic time in my life. I'm hoping you're doing great. Don't judge my voice. But I, I, I think it sounds me. just as good as it always does. Well, God, you're in such a smooth talker. You know, that's why Nani's your number one fan. And yeah. I wanted to say... Hey, Nani, Nani, Nani. Hey, Nani, Nani, no. Do, 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 do. Do you know that song by Van Morrison called Kingdom Hall? Um, no. But 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 that's where he says, "Hey, nani, 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 hey, nani, no." It's either that or it's Lottie, Lottie, hey, Lottie, low. But do 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 do. Anyway, listen to Kingdom Hall. I know Lottie, Dottie. We likes to party. You're not a big. You're not a hip hop fan. Um. Anyway. Okay. I was talking the other day to a good friend of the show, I know for sure, based off the last views we've had, folks. Three? Come on! Yeah. You can do more than three. But I was talking to a friend of the show. He was definitely one of the three. Um, Eddie Canestrachi. That's Great cool. Guy. I had to, Lee, you're kind of you're kinda like hit with this, but I had to ask... You know, because I've been ostracized. So I, I don't know too much, but I still have a few people in the world there. Yeah. And uh, the Whack Pack poll. What is going on with the Whack Pack poll? Eddie wanted to know. Because he explained to me what it was, Lee. Oh. Yes. I uh, want you to understand something. All okay, right. the whack back poll. Go, you tell your perspective, and, and it's not an embarrassment thing. Because I'm going to turn this round upside down today. Okay. The show. Well, ahead. when I first mentioned it to you, I mentioned it because, well, first of all, I was drunk, and because I felt angered, and I also mentioned it to someone else who also, like you'll probably do, said positive things but when I first looked at it it said the well, whack I was pack on there too, Lee. I was on there too yes so, yes okay yeah. but but that's partly why I I even mentioned it to you was because was because I thought usually I stay out of things if I'm not mentioned but when I mentioned I'm like okay hell to pay but the thing is, The whack pack has been considered, from the definition that I had read, people who are mentally unstable and possibly racist. And 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 and, um and and um even though I know that's not the case, it was it was just and then and then of course with with Mr. Person who put the thing up and and I noticed that um, on a post that you did where he commented, he was saying yeah. other people could put in things, but no, our names were put by him. They weren't posted by other people. He put both of our names up. But anyway, well, I mean, the not- thing is, I, yeah. I thought, and I'm not going to mention names except to say I thought, Wow, why are these people voting for me? But but then again, with one guy who I know is a good friend, he likes to joke, and I figured right. it was a part of his fun. So I, I'm not going to jump to conclusions, but at the time, I thought, you know, screw this shit. 
that's I what I it. thought. Okay, okay, I that's that's now, that that's my take. When I got clarification, because again, you know, Eddie C is basically the Lord Mayor of that whole community. Yeah. And he explained it to me. First of all, Lee Gersman, I finished last. I don't like finishing last. I would have gladly taken your spot. I would have gladly okay. been last. And I am not mad being last because I'm just an asshole. Now, what they think about Lee Gersman is, okay, let's go into an alternate universe, Lee, because we're doing some wacky shit right here today on the Lee Gersman show. It's great to be the number one wacky guy. You have a niche, man. And it's fucking awesome. And, and I didn't even get voted for by this guy that made the poll there, Ronnie Nogan. So uh, I was last. I'm not happy. You won. Get over it. I'm last again on the Lee Gerson show. God damn it. I am not happy about it, but uh, if, if if you think it's You're okay, a winner, dude. then that's You're a winner. fine. I yeah. mean, I mean... It's cool that you're telling me this. I mean, you're a good guy, so that's all right. But what I mean is, it doesn't help because people still don't look at the things I post. Dude, dude, you're the whack master because you're the man. And then I just don't get along with a certain person. And then... That for other guys. I mean, I pull. know what you're talking about. Yes. And, and, and with, with my being purposefully out there, yeah. But what I mean is, but there's a lot of people who interpreted it negatively in a bad I, way. And that's what annoys me. I mean, I have to make one side comment here. I, I don't know why I would be wacky because of the fact that I wouldn't take loving from cheap trick the rest of you will that's good I'm glad. <laughs> I, 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 I find Not now me. here is the thing the fact that mm -hmm. they are doing that means how petty they are well there you go and i don't give a fuck so you can put me at number one of the whack pack motherfuckers or whatever you want to do it upset my boy lean but hey you know what we're cool because he's a winner and we're on the Lee Gersman show today. I'll so put it to you like my... this. I I yeah. am I have decided that um it would be like an old man who's in a wheelchair who screams obscenities at me. It's like what else does he have going on in his life? Nothing. So am I going to go and try to talk and bug him? Or do I just right. let him scream? And I, I feel that way about them. The ultimate, the ultimate uh, insult to me was not that you won. It was that that guy who made the poll voted for our ex-co-host, our mutual co-host, and he didn't even win. God damn. Um, I I'm a complete loser in that world. You know what? I have to tell you this. Mm -hmm. the, the fact that he has said stuff about my drinking and about my apparent not looking so good or whatever. Yeah. He, he had here? a different aspect. He's now saying, I guess, that it's meant as honor and positive. But yeah, it was right. a right, dig. Right, right, it right. was at first a dig. For you, it, it was. Is. For me, it was wasn't. meant to for be. For you, it wasn't. And for whoever put me on. I the thought phone, it was at first for me a dig. Also, no, it wasn't. for you, it wasn't. But and, and not that it shouldn't have been for me, I think, <laughs> but because nobody voted for me. Including or two people or whatever. I don't know because I ain't in that group. If because. it were me, I would have been honored that they did not vote for me. Let me tell you the truth. Here, I am. Uh, I'm not even in those groups. I'm so ostracized because I like what I like, and I remember the mantra of those shows. I think those people did not. Anyway, yeah. Um, All I'm was, saying is that. I'm 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 still kind of annoyed at at the fact that it happened, but I'm also willing to just sort of let 
them do whatever they do and not really care too much. Well, let's just say it like this. One day, myself and me, you'll have this little keyboard, I'm going to have my guitar, we'll be busting. In, okay. In uh, Manhattan, and when you guys, you can laugh all you want while you're sitting in your basement stroking your foot. Okay. What yeah, and in album? fact, I, 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 I think that's cool. I, I think that whatever they do, it's yeah, yeah. It's like they, yeah, yeah, they yeah, yeah. post so much silly shit that as far as I'm concerned, we, we, I we, we. I just want to finish with one thing. Yeah, go ahead, boy. That, that, that that's part of the reason I don't post much. But, okay, now oh, I'm cool. I, I do on my own wall, and I find it interesting if people like to tell me what they yeah, do on my I, own I'm wall. I'm talking about you, their wall. I'm t right. Yeah, but anyway, you, go on. You, anybody goes on my wall and is offended, unfriend me, no. Um, the... I'm not unfriended. I'm sometimes like, okay, okay, I'll I'll let him alone. But but that's it. I'm kidding. It's two, or, two, or, two or three people told these people to, to put me on ignore. It's okay. Um, you know, that's what they do. That's what they do. They like to be told what to do. And that's cool. Yeah. I will not because I am the spirit of rock and roll, motherfuckers. Ah. So I hope you like your answer, Eddie C. So what are we doing today? We are doing a group that nobody... Oh, and can I say real quick, Eddie, you know I love you. Mutual friends with my daughter. Yeah, I'm friends with my daughter. We're cool. I ain't got nothing against you, so don't take what I said personal. It's an editorial. All right, Lee, go ahead. Yeah, um, we're doing a group that nobody on Facebook um, probably knows and... I don't think anybody in my space knew this group. And and, and and yeah, and 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 the only people who do know them are people who are, are maybe the, my the, age or older who don't go on yeah. social media. You're the like this is definitely why you're the champion. Because yeah. Because we know this you know this band, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. It's, I I, I up this all right. Name all day, tell us what this band is. Okay, I, I will in a moment, but I have to give a segue. I have to give like a story. Uh -huh. Okay, I well, first of all, I, I got, I'm a terrible ethnic man, but go ahead. I, I well, whatever. Um, I I got this what song happened? when I was um about eight or or, or nine or I the 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 years are a blur in in a. A thrift store? No, uh, it it was a yard sale, and I forget whether or not it was the only album there, or what, or the only album that interested me. But I even remember getting it. I remember asking them, "How do these guys sound?" And I remember they say, "They we don't know. They sound like music." <laughs> and so I thought, well, okay, they have a dog on the cover, and they all look like they're kind of <laughs> hip and. And laid back, once, right? so yeah. sure. And well, but well, okay. Um, me, uh, before you announce the band, and I will in about five minutes. But go on. No, I won't go. No, no, no. There's a reason. Go on. Go on. No, I'm trying to be the Ed McMahon here in the rehearsal show. Yeah. The, By the way, the Ed McKing Vitamin. Go on. Yeah, yeah, King Vitamin. Yeah. Going. Now we're going to talk about government. <laughs> we're going to talk about government cheese next. Um, yeah, cool. Folks, stand by in about six, seven months for in-the-field correspondence reports on the reverse show. Okay. And uh, you'll enjoy that. And I don't know what else I was going to say, but what's the name of this fucking... Well, first of all... Pay? No, no, I need to ask you. No, I have to tell you first. Did you pay more than a nickel for this record? It was maybe, maybe a quarter. Anyway, do you right. know of the group, the Blues Project? Heard no, of them? No. Heard no. of? Do you know the song "I Can't Keep from Crying"? Sometimes. I guess I have to say yes, so I don't. Know well, you know yeah, about sure. Cooper, don't you? Who? Al yes. Cooper. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah. All right. Blues Project had after they did their albums. They broke up, and there were two factions who did two different groups. One group 
became more well known. That was Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Oh, uh, yeah, I've heard of them. Okay, the other faction, the other people did what's in this group. And we're doing wow. it out by Sea Train. Sea Train, not Sea Biscuit, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Um, do you know that? Little, little, little trivia note for all those Chicago nerds out there. Do you know Jimmy Garcia won his first Grammy with the Blood, Sweat, and Tears? Lee Gersman. Yeah. Do you know who yeah. produced this album by C Train? No, because it was just on YouTube. And I George Martin. George Martin. He was known to uh, produce Cheap Trick. Wow. He was known to produce the Beatles. No, he did the uh, Dream Police, right? Or no, All Shook Up. All Shook Up. Oh my, I'm so sorry. Cheap Trick Tart. I I think his best work was All Shook Up. Oh, by far. I, I, I mean, Sergeant Peppers has nothing to do. <laughs> has nothing on All Shook Up. And that is, by the way, my favorite Cheap Trick album. Is that okay, Cheap Trick fans? I think it is. But go ahead, yeah. please. Anyway, so, yeah, he, and, and so, this group, their very first album was they under had the name, yes, they had five albums, their, this is their third. That's their, right, you said that, I'm their, sorry. Their, their first album had to be contractually under the name Blues Project, and that one is on streaming. Maybe that one's good. Uh, I have some things to say, but but I'll wait until we do reviews of it. But I have I don't know. You might. But 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 then they did another album, and then after that, they recamped, and a guy named Peter Rowan, who you remember him, right? Yes, I do. He was from Earth Opera. And he was like and the it. Rowan Brothers. He was I on like this it. album and on this version of the group. I kind of figured. I, I think I heard him singing a bit. You know? And then and then so I had the album back when I was about eight or nine or ten, so I know everything. But well, you already do. But then after they did two albums with this lineup, they did one more album. Their most publicly forgettable album, even though I like it, and it's the only album. Yeah. Other than the first album that's on streaming. Right. Which is cool. weird how the only but, album on streaming is the one album that people don't know. I know, <coughs> folks. Don't look for this one. That yeah. might be an indication of the fun that's going to be had today on the episode. Because don't yeah. look for this one. It's it's gotta, it's it's hard to... Lee Gersman at the Lee Gersman Show. It's, it's hard to find it because when yes. you find it... You find that there are some songs that are edited wrong and all sorts of crap. Ooh. Did you Maybe find were... did did you do the one that I gave you so that you got the right edit? Of course I did because who right. in the hell would look up Sea Biscuit? Yeah. Oh, Sea Tree. Right yeah. On. But anyway, I I picked this album because I I I wanted to do it for a while, and I finally figured, okay, it's time. And being the Ed McMahon, yes, of the Lee Gerson show, of course, I will listen and give my my thoughts. So, yeah. enough about the history. Yeah. Let's All right. dive in it. Okay, right? do you want to go first or me? I'll go first. Why okay, not? the first song is Willin'. What do you think about that one? Um, well, I before I say what I think... Um, I only take that offer because Lee is a gentleman. Thank you. For the people at home, and he likes stuffed insurance. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Willing. Why, why don't fail me down? You fail me down right now, man. That 70s why just hits right. Well, unless you hate that sound. Uh, and I'm kind of in, in the middle of that, Lee. I, I, it works on this one. But other songs, I get annoyed by that sound. But uh, definitely some groovy, hippie gold here. AM radio all the way. Kind of like a hometown hippie jam fest. Lots of weed and party references. I'd almost call this 
hippie fusion Bakersfield sound rock. That's, Don't that sound greatly? That's actually about what it was. Right. This violin solo is a nice touch. Not too bad, man. I mean, I didn't lose it over it, but there's some decent sounds here, so I'll give a more positive to Will. Right on. I would say they play it well, and it shows the top not top notch musicianship of the band. But I feel that it's a sort of concession to sound to try to sound like they want to have a hit. It's by the way a cover of the song by Little Feet. But anyway, and it has a polished edge that they managed to do well but makes me think they probably had to make concessions to the record company on this tune. So it's not my favorite track on here. It's, see, it's the one track I think is out of place. See why Lee is the guru of us? Does Little Feet sound anything like Can Be Lee Gersman? Uh, maybe when they were in private and drunk, but that's about it. See? That's why he is the he is the man, yes sir. Yeah. He think is he thinks it's kind of like filler, and I thought it was kind of cool. All right. Well, that's so. because you didn't grow up with the album. But anyway. No, no, I did not. All right. All right. Anyway, the next song, "Song of Job." Okay. This used to be one of my favorite songs on the album, and musically, it still holds up, except perhaps later. During some of the spoken parts, it meanders a little bit longer than my taste, but most of the song is done well and has a bluesy edge I dig. And Richard Green's violin playing, playing is especially nice here. He was in the Jim Queskin Jug Band, by the way, and apparently in a group with Peter Rowan back before Earth Opera. But anyway, it's one of the better songs on the album even though it might be a couple of minutes longer than it needs to be. What do you think? Peter Rowan, uh, everybody at home, take your notes. That is the professor. You are the man, sir. Okay. Yeah. We get a bit of a jazz swing here on this one. Like that old school jazz. Breaking down the book of Job. Pretty decent subject matter. I, I don't want to get too religious here on the Gersman show, but I, I'm not sure if Job actually yielded, though, to God, but he does here. Uh, I'm quite fond of the piano licks laid down here. Pretty unique fusions of sound, again. A tad bit too fucking long, so we agree on that. But actually, a pretty neato track. Pretty cool. Right on. Now, what do you think of Broken Morning? Man, we was doing great. Then that fucking flute. Ha! Ah. Do you go out of your way to find flute jams, Lee? I don't no. know. No. Um, well, it's not plastered all over it, so it isn't the worst use of that fucking abysmal instrument. Uh, sounds like a different vocalist. I wasn't sure who didn't look up any facts. Unusual for me. Yeah, well, Andy Kohlberg from the Blues Project is on flute. He also wrote the first song, even though I think Peter Rowan sang the first song, but I didn't look at the notes. That would be Peter Rowan. I, oh, I, right. I mean Peter Rowan from Song of Job. But I don't and then I think I think Andy Kohlberg sang Broken Morning, but. I haven't looked at the liner notes for a long time. Anyway, yeah, it go was on. A different singer, yeah. Yeah, uh, they have a few. He seems to have a tad bit of a better singing voice. A bit melodramatic though this song, but the vocals are a pleasant surprise. I'm kind of torn on this one. I lean towards it's okay, but there's something not there for me to completely grab me. But the vocals are decent. Here. Right on. And what do you think of the next song, which is the first Home song written by Peter Rowan called Home to You? So far, this sounds a bit more quote unquote normal. Uh, it seems a bit more in its element of its time and day. Uh, perhaps, you know, 
I don't know. Yeah, this it's kind of a bland, generic hippie ballad. Uh, I'd rather they not come home on this one. Here. Uh, this one really kind of sucked, and Ow. to be honest, it really blew balls. But go ahead. Man. All right, um, I'm looking at my notes, and I'm still not sure what I meant. But anyway, it's almost. <laughs> A too subtle song musically, as if it was meant to be filler. But it actually is one of the good tracks on here. It's the closest Peter Rowan came to writing singer-songwriter material. And it's pretty yeah. decent. A good yeah. but admittedly deep cut. I don't think... I, I'm glad he decided not to go that route anymore. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I, I can... I used to yeah, feel that way, is. so it's okay. This Thanks. song is fucking horrible. Oh, All right, oh, oh okay. Oh, okay. The next song, um, "Out Where the Hills," and that that's another written written by the song of Joe People. Anyway, oh, those um, people. All right, all right. All right, Joe People. Let's go. Yeah, this tries to be the highlight of the album, and in some ways it is, because the playing is superb <laughs> on it, and the spacey elements remind me of the group. McKendry Spring, who I might <coughs> hoist on you one of these days when you're even drunker, but not as yeah, impactful as that band's <coughs> spacey stuff. The song, though, is a little bit meandering for my taste now. Even though I liked it more back in the day, it's still a track I will hear and enjoy, but I'll still recognize its flaws. What do you think? This one we on? Out where the hills. Out where the hills. Now let's see. This might be the breakthrough. Uh, I just don't get what we're trying to do here. Country easy, easy listening fusion, I guess. <laughs> I would usually go for one or the other, but not both combined. Oh. What? Well, while this one is just way out there for me, and plus the violin reminds me of that twaddish motherfucker Dave Matthews music. I hate Dave Matthews. Uh oh. Um, way, way not here for me. This fucking song was worse than home to you. All right. Oh. Oh. What? What? What do you think of the next one? I can almost grip my teeth on this. But what do you think of Waiting for Elijah? Kind of like some dust in the wind era Kansas here. Some real delicate acoustic guitar playing. Oddly, because it isn't trying to blend all these different things, this one does something for me here. Uh, but I mean, after all, I am an Oasis fan, so therefore I give up all rights to any semblance of manhood, I guess. Uh, this one was a pretty cool one, though. I liked it. Yeah, I think this was one of the other ones that Peter Rowan wrote, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, I think I like the Baroque arrangement and the harpsichord and violin parts, and those elements are some of the best things on the album. Except the song is a bit trite, like an afterthought. It's not compelling enough of a song to match the great arrangement so it sounds too much like a fellow song, which it is, but with great playing. It's so far the least interesting track on here overall, even though there were parts I liked. All right. Now, for 13 questions. All right. One of the best songs on the album. I like the progressive rock meets country element, and it's done in a way... No other group has done quite as well. It's an interesting mix of country progressive rock and a little bit of Baroque, and I think it's very cool. And it's another one done by the Song of Joe people. All right, what do you think? Uh, we're in Elijah. Uh, oh, oh, you, you, you. No, no, we're in yeah. 13 questions. 13 uh, questions. We had a nice run here, you know, with the previous. Uh, this one just sounds like a controlled mess. Oh! But I guess a nice one where you know where everything is type ah. of controlled mess. I just don't like the choices made on this track. It's, uh, oh. 
kind of like a hot mess of shit here, but I will oh. say I do hear musical talent. Just not my kind of sounds here, and the violin is about enough at this fucking point okay okay <laughs> even though even though the violin is the reason why people like the group anyway just just like right. just like people like just hotel for the flute and that's oh, why you'll God, never God. go to their shows i guess no i never never yeah, i'd rather okay. go see hagar okay, oh well, yeah. <laughs> all right um what do you think of Oh My Love, Sally Gooden? And I have to explain, um, Oh My Love is a Peter Rowan tune, and Sally Gooden is a traditional tune arranged by Richard Green. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you think? The yodeling is just atrocious. Uh, in this mock hoedown type of gallopy type song on this part of the Oh My Love, uh, Makes Don't Pass Me By by the Beatles sound like Megadeth. Ha! Huh. I guess the violin solo is well played. And uh, it goes on, and then it sounds like either a square dance or an auctioneer doing his thing. Yeah, well, <laughs> hell no more here. Fuck oh, this song. Oh, shit! Oh, boy. I thought the song Oh My Love is not bad. But it's a pretty simple tune that on its own doesn't do much. But combined with Sally Gooden, it becomes a good track. Or to be more specific, the Sally Gooden part is a good track. But the lead up to it is interesting. So, oh my love is okay. I do like the medley approach and it overall is a decent listen and a highlight on the album. A highlight? Yeah. Ooh, okay. Right. You you might think just like that warden highlighted the turd in the toilet right. by putting a flashlight on it. Jeez, are we? But yeah. uh, oh boy. Oh great one. Let's keep rolling. All right. Um, I don't know now whether I'm so great, but anyway, um, the the <laughs> next one is creeping midnight. All right. I I think. It sounds metal. Yeah. The worst yeah. track on the album. It the has worst. no interesting instrumental passages, and it doesn't do anything unexpected. It's their way of letting us know they can play a Carol King song and sound like her, <laughs> and they do succeed, but I don't see the point of it. All right. What do you think? No. <laughs> oh, shit. Something... I can groove with Oh, here. damn it! Shit that's been hard to find in the weeds that are this record. Oh, boy. But again, boy. it has a sound I gravitate to. Oh, boy. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sure there's others that can't stand. You know, song structure. <laughs> oh, focus, like me. A, a focused sound. And even though this does remind me of tad bit of, e of say either the band or maybe even some of those 70s stones piano yeah, I things uh it's got a sing-along at the bar type vibe this must be the best song on the record oh jesus but we still have one to go oh, shit. so and and, I will and, say, and uh, yeah um, this is a good bar song. Here. I think I, I think I'm either afraid of how we will differ on this one, or I will be glad if we don't. Anyway, okay. the last one is or or Orange Blossom Special. Mm -hmm. All right, um, you take it away. What do you think? Take it away. Okay. Oh my. Can. These people, the, uh, the what are these, the Sea Biscuits here, can they pull off a song Johnny Cash made famous? I'm nervous to listen, but I'm going to give it a go when I did. And uh, the violin mimicking train sounds is actually pretty cool. Uh, now we have a violin part that works for me. It's not like that Dave Matthews nonsense. Uh, this one is not embarrassing at all great playing and actually that hillbilly hippie fusion sound works here 
not the best song in the record. That would be Creepin' Creep Midnight. Oh. Uh, nor near as good as Johnny Cash's version, but at least it was a decent listen on the way out. And my final notes are here for this record. I do hear the appeal, but elite, but elite music fans will hate it. it hence it, why I, yeah, hence why I lean towards more like nah dislike because I'm not quite. I I do like Kiss after all. So what the hell? Do okay, I mean? go ahead. It, so in other words, you will say it's more for people who like to put on their overalls and dip in mud, as opposed yes. to you pedestrian tuxedo air-conditioned yacht guys. Right, napkin like your hill boys. Okay. Okay. I think very best song on this album, uh, with the band showing what they can do and doing it greatly, it's truly an awesome rendition of the song, and I dig it. Well, it's not the worst song in the album. Yeah, um, okay. We've already talked offline, folks. Uh, I think there's going to be more. C train coming soon, and I'm so happy for that. Believe me. Um, except for one other album which resembles this, don't worry, they're all pretty different. Okay, no spooky tooth with the French guy, right? Spooky no way do they do they that. Are. No, no, um, oh, okay. that, that, right. that, that. By the way, I um, know of another album that the French guy did, which is also rockin'. So it wasn't no, only Spooky Tooth that did that rock stuff. The French guy did it too. They were just <clears throat> trying to back out because nobody cared for it. I'm with that. And, uh, but anyway, I like the French guy. He did... He did an album called yeah, 39 Minutes of Opening and Closing a Door. That, that, do you want to do it? And why are you the champion, Lee? You like, do, yes, do, I would do it. Well, well, I, 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 haven't, I, I haven't heard it yet. So I, I'm not going to subject it to you yet. It makes Alan's Psychedelic Breakfast sound like a fucking Tchaikovsky masterpiece. And that would All be right. very, very hard to do. Yeah. Anyway. But anyway. I do thank I, you for doing the album. And I thank and, you for having me. And, and you know, because like because it. um no matter what you think of it, you're allow I mean you, you, you allow my um musical um stuff thrown at you. Yeah, we do whatever on the Lee Gerson show, man. We don't have any genres here. Yeah. And uh I appreciate being back on again, Lee. I'm sorry I didn't. But stay tuned, folks, for more C Train reviews. Yeah. There you go. Kitty, kitty, chow, chow, chow meow, 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 meow. As always, it's okay. a pleasure. Okay, take care. All right. Bye bye.